Gentlemen, in the picture you've just witnessed, you've seen the underworld's challenge and your government's answer to that challenge. Now, you men have been chosen to represent your government in the fight to stamp out the criminal element of our nation. The Federal Bureau of Investigation trains you to meet the hoodlum on his own ground. It arms you to fight the gangster with his own weapon. Your training gives you every advantage over an underworld that has pursued its vicious course with total disregard for the life and property of decent citizens. But remember, there are no rules in the game of justice versus crime. All criminals are rats and should be treated as such. Your training is just beginning. Now it's up to you. Work hard, train hard. Because when you're full-fledged agents, you'll have to fight hard. Go to it. Good luck. G-Man. Why, tomorrow you'll be mingling with some of our best criminals. If the director hadn't sent for you to act as our instructor for a few months, I, I doubt if I'd have made the grade. So you think as a teacher I was a pushover, huh? Oh, no. No, I merely meant that. I understand what you mean, Ron. And thanks for the compliment. But your real teachers are the criminals you're going to run into from now on. They'll chalk up a lesson every time you meet them. And if you don't pass, curtains. Five years ago, a soft-hearted parole board released one of our sweetest specimens. Since then, he's been mixed up in more crimes than you believe it possible for any one man to commit and get away with. We have very good reason to believe he's hiding somewhere in California with his five sons. I understand he rules them with an iron hand, and he's trained them each to be a specialist in crime. Paul Stark. He's one man we've got to get and get soon. I don't care if 50 G-men are arriving by plane tomorrow. I think the whole bunch of you are yellow. No son of mine is going to tell me whether their job is safe or whether it isn't. I make the decisions here and do all the thinking. Don't forget that. Well, I ain't, Yella. Give me your gun and I'll bump Dick Tracy. Shut up. Sit down, kid. We're going to pull off that job tomorrow at 12 o'clock, just as I planned it. And you all know what to do. Mr. Tracy's not here. I'm expecting him at any moment. Yes, I'll be glad to. Mr. Tracy's office. Oh, yes, Mr. Fields. No, Mr. Tracy's not arrived as yet. Yes, I'll be glad to. I'll tell him the moment he comes in. Goodbye. Things are coming to life around here, but Tracy on his way back. Eh, Gwen? I can't wait to see him. Neither can I. Let's see. It's been almost three Come minutes. Come on, you public nuisance number one. Where's Dick? Yeah, where is he? You both a little early. He hasn't arrived yet. And they're both bad detectives, too, Gwen. Dick! I was ten feet behind them all the way down the hall. Hiya, Steve. Hi, oh, Steve. Oh, oh, yeah. Boy, it's great to see you. Well, this is what I call a real welcome. I'm glad to see you all. I want to meet a newcomer, Special Agent Ron Merton. This is my secretary, Ms. Andrews. Hello. How do you do? Special Agent Steve Lockwood. How do you do? How are you, Steve? And this is Mike McGurk, Super Sleuth. Glad to meet you. If you ever need any help figuring out things, just call on me. Thanks. And this is Junior, one of my most capable assistants. Glad to meet you, Mr. Burton. How do you do, Junior? I feel as though I've known all of you for a long while. Mr. Tracy's told me so much about you. All for you, Mr. Tracy, and all important. All right, Gwen. Oh, Steve, will you show Ron the lab while I go through these? Excuse me, Ron. Certainly. Okay. This way, Ron. Tracy speaking. Oh, yes, Mr. Ward. Surely I'll send an agent right over. Ron. Pardon me. Gee, he sure is a swell guy, isn't he? Yeah, he sure is. Yeah. No time like the present to go to work, Ron. 
The Ward Trust and Bonding Company has just requested a special agent to accompany half a million dollars across town. Your first assignment. You'll find the details on this card. Right. I'll pick you up at that bank and we'll take Junior back to school. Okay. Yes, sir. Come, Pa. must be deaf. Yeah, you better turn off this alley at the next intersection. But, sir, we're not supposed to leave our specified route. I know it. But I have a hunch this is not on the level. Finish those guys in a hurry. There wasn't a peep out of them. Hello, Mr. Tracy. Hello, Malloy. The word bonding shipment arrived yet? No, sir. It's about eight minutes late. I was beginning to wonder about it. I'll check back over its route. If it doesn't arrive in five minutes, send out a general alarm. Yes, sir. What's the matter, Mr. Tracy? I don't know, Junior, but we're going to find out. It's almost through. Be careful you don't get a whiff of that gas when she comes open. wrong, Junior. Hurry it up, boys. The only car that's come out of this alley in the last 15 minutes, Mr. Tracy, was a Whiteman storage van. Which way did it go? I believe it went down that way. Thanks. a nice piece of wood. Yeah. Went out slick. But the, but the G-man, he... What about the G-man? You didn't figure on gas masks. Well, come on, what happened? Don't worry. You won't cause us any trouble. 
Kid plucked him. He had a gun on Champ and me. Suppose you made sure he was dead? Well, he dropped without making a sound. Did you make sure he was dead? How do you know you haven't left a witness behind who can identify you all? Slow down. What are you doing? I'm gonna make sure of that Jean man. The kid will get him. Drive to the city dump. Why, hello, kid. I'm not the kid. Now get going. Sure. Stay with him, Junior. Anybody see what happened to the men inside of that cab? It burst into flames before I got here. Maybe that man can tell you he was the first one here. Worst one I ever seen. I was no more than 20 feet away when it happened. What about the people inside? Poor fellas, they never had a chance. The driver still seemed to be conscious. I tried to get to him, but suddenly the cab was a mass of blaze and flames. You live in the neighborhood? No, no, no I live over the other side of town. I just happened to be walking this way today. You know, the old business, looking for a job. Quite a walk. Yeah. Especially with a broken ankle. You'll be needing a doctor to fix that fracture. I tell you, I broke my ankle when I was trying to help those people out of wreck. What did you do with that gun after you shot Special Agent Merton? I never had a gun. I don't know what you're talking about. Make a paraffin test with your right hand. Hello? Lockwood speaking. This is Gwen, with the hospital. Hold the line, Mr. Tracy wants to speak with you. We got him into that iron lung just in time. The nerves controlling his breathing muscles were paralyzed by two of the bullets. Mr. Lockwood's on the phone. Thank you. Hello, Steve. The doctor says Ron will pull through. That's good news, Dick. He's still unconscious, but when he comes to, we'll be able to identify that man we're holding. We've just taken a paraffin test of his right hand. Yep, they show up all right, Chief. Yeah, there's no doubt he's guilty. Lock him up. I'll be at the lab in 20 minutes. Okay, Dick. Lock him up, boys. Ah, Dick Tracy's got the kid. He's gonna pin the whole rap on him. What about the other G-man? Still living. They got him in an iron lung over at the receiving hospital. Has he talked? Not yet. He's been out like a light since they picked him up. They'll have a hard time burning the kid if that G-man never talks. He's not going to. Let's check for those footprints we found along the bottom of the ditch. I got it, Chief! I got all the dope on Joe Hanner, the driver of that taxi cab. It was just like you said. I went to the cab company with a number of the cab's license plates, and they gave me his pictures, his fingerprints, and everything. Well, 
Joe Hanner shouldn't be hard to trace. I think I know where he's gone. I found out he has a brother living in Salt Lake City. I checked all the ticket agencies and showed him Joe's picture. A clerk for the Speedhound bus company said he remembered a guy that looked like Hanner buying a ticket for Salt Lake. Good work, Mike. That's using the old noodle. If we bring Hanner back here, a lot of missing pieces will fit into the puzzle. Why do you suppose he beat it? Very obvious. He didn't want to identify his passenger. You and Mike hop the plane for Salt Lake and bring Hanner back. Right. Right over. What's happened? We've lost a great guy, Gwen. Ron's gone. It was only this morning I sent Ron in his first assignment. Gee, he was proud. Proud of that first job. I'm going to finish that job for him, Gwen. There won't be a rat left in the underworld who'll be allowed to forget why Ron Merton died. This is a cast of the tire tracks left by the car in which the gang made their getaway. Notice the distinct flaw that appears on the tire, caused by a defect in the mold used in making it. Now, there are not more than a dozen retread tire shops in the city. Check on each of them. Find one with a corresponding flaw in the tire mold. Then get a list of persons to whom such tires were sold. Get going. suspect whom they believe Hanner will identify as the man who did the fatal shooting. I guess it's all up with the kid now. Why, the best mouthpiece in the country couldn't save him. If that taxi driver puts a finger on him. Yeah, if it wasn't for him, the kid would have a chance. They'd have a hard time proving he was in that cab. I've got a plan that'll keep Hanner from ever laying eyes on the kid. No, drive straight to the ridge with that equipment. Okay. You leave in the sedan about a half an hour. I'll pick up Champ and meet you tonight at the beam station. Right. Hello, Mr. Tracy. I've located the shop where those tires are made. 203 South Norman. Wait for me there. I'll be right over. I discovered the flaw you're speaking of after I'd struck off about three sets of tires. I had the move and repaired right away. Well, that narrows the search down considerably. What became of those tires? Why, that fellow who owns the electrical shop across the street said he wanted for some friends of his. So I sold him two sets. That's him now. Thank you. We'll question him. the same kind of tires we're looking for. I'm going to follow it and see where it goes. You question the men in the shop. I figured anything was better than getting mixed up with that stock gang, so I lit out. So it was Kit Stark that did the shooting. My life wasn't worth two cents being a witness to it. Why they'd have me out in no time at all? You guys will have to give me plenty of protection until the rest of that gang is rounded up. You'll get it, all right.
That's him. Come on. Park the car off the road, Sam. We got to step on it. There's not much time. Keep quiet and you won't get hurt. Okay, Jim, time up. Get up. Come on. Keep watch outside. Hey, what are you guys up to? all the equipment. What ships are in the air? Flight 9 coming in from Salt Lake. And there's a low ceiling. They'll need the beam. The minute the beam cut out, they probably circle ahead of for another port. They're in constant touch with the airfield anyway. Well, can we listen in on their reports? Everything's wrecked in here. But the fellow who works the day shift has a receiving radio in his plane. It's on the field outside. Come on. I'll give it 15 more minutes. Listen. Calling to this airport. Flight line checking in. Flight nine calling the airport. Calling the airport. Flight nine calling municipal airport. Municipal airport back. Go ahead, flight nine. Flying at 3,000 feet, airspeed 180. 
Visibility poor. Beam coming in strong. Flight 9 reports the beam coming in strong, but that couldn't be. One of them kept looking at his watch, and at a certain time they cut the switch. That's it. When they cut off that beam, the rest of the gang started a false one somewhere. A false beam that is leading the ship to disaster. How long would it take you to warn the airport to broadcast a message to that plane? I could drive to a phone in five minutes. Is this ship gassed up? Yes. I'm taking off to pick up that false beam to locate its source. You get to that phone and warn the airport before it's too late. Hurry. Contact! Come in, Flight 9. Visibility still poor. Figure we've cleared the cold water mountain range. Beam signal strong. to do. trying to do. Airport. This is the airport. 
Flight 9 calling. Municipal Airport. Jones answering. Go ahead, Flight 9. Decrease's plane crash at Azimuth North, 48 degrees west. Distance approximately 28 miles from your position. Direct in flight. Send a rescue party immediately. That's all. Load the stuff on the truck. Stop driving the truck to town. Right. It'll do. We can identify people from much less of a fingerprint than that. And I'm hoping this print will lead us directly to the Stark gang. We'll shoot this to Washington in a few hours. We'll know all about Snow. <laughs> That's a funny name. That's his moniker. Moniker? What's that mean, Mr. Lockwood? Well, that's his nickname. If he's a criminal, he'll probably have that on file, too. The G-men know all the crooks' monikers? <laughs> well, most of them. Gee. Gwen. Get me Washington from the teletype, please. Yes, sir. Division, FBI, Washington, D.C. Teletype me all information you have on person, nickname Snub. Fingerprint classification. Tracy's car is over in that garage. If he gets the court, he'll pin the whole rap on the kid. Not when this blows up. Okay, when you get it planted, go on back to the hideout. Right. Junior, leave Mike alone. We'll be at criminal court, Division 9. The Kid Star case opens in a half an hour. people. Yes. I have a suspicion they don't like me. Look after them, Steve. I've got to get to court. Right. They'd never 
convicted him without Tracy. Yeah, and if you'd stuck around and seen if that bomb was in that car like it should have been. Shut up! Well, what do you want? Here. Yeah. We need more cars for that Manila shipment. Well, you heard him. What are you waiting for? Come on, get out. Okay. About that special little parker. Put in a Super 8 Harmer motor. Change the serial numbers. Take that sedan body off and make it a coupe. Yes, sir. Paint it yellow. a Drake mortar and paint it a two-tone green. Right. Hey, Scrub, strike it. Okay. It was easy. Why, she even left the keys in the car. Can you imagine anybody being so dumb? Madison. Yeah, Snub worked here until last week, then he quit. Why? Why, because he... Uh... Say, listen, mister. I didn't ask him why. He just checked out, that's all I know. Let's go, Steve. Thanks. Well, what do you think? Snub's up there, all right. I saw his time card in the rack. You get Hunt, Rance, and Reynolds. I'm gonna have a look around. Right. Get this one changed over. Start them all for the dust. Okay. Come on, let's get the money ready. A million dollars. It 
Certainly was a swell haul. Why, that Armwood Court job was just the beginning. Don't move. Turn around. All right, you. Turn around. Put out your hands. What's the idea? The paint remover is loaded with ether. Gas won't clear out for hours. Trigger, do. Do. Pull that car over the head of the ramp. Don't let that gas get you. Put him behind the wheel. Ramp the wheel over and get out. He'll crack up and his death will be accident. Shove it down the ramp. evens up for the kid. Gonna shoot. Well, what do we do now? That ether gas won't clear out for hours. Trigger, do. Do. Pull that car over the head of the ramp. Don't let that gas get you. Bring 
Shove it down the ramp. That evens up for the kid. Ron Merton was guarding when he was shot. That wall's a fake. There are machine shops on the other side. We'll break it down. They'll be gone before we can break through. They're bound to leave clues. We'll fingerprint the place and take their files and correspondence. You men bring the money. Come on, Steve. They certainly didn't leave much. Clever guy, that Stark. All prepared to move out. As we were taught in school, a criminal always leaves something. Here's a slim chance. Maybe something's written on this. We'll test it. Naval and military plans and sells them to any nation that will pay him. I wonder what he wanted with the Starks. Check on Croner. Take Rance, Reynolds, and Hunt and cover all his activities for the past week. Make a list of all his telephone calls and copies of all the telegrams he sent and received. Right. Just why do you want this radio control, Baron? Because the radio control installed in the new army tank represents the outcome of 10 years' experiments by the finest brains in the United States Army. A military development of the utmost importance. What about the guards, Corona? They'll have been disposed of. The car that the tank is being shipped into the coast will be sidetracked at Perlita Junction about 2 p.m. The rest is up to you. We'll have the radio control for you before we... Excellent. How as I represent will pay you well for its safe delivery. But gentlemen, remember I expect results. Good day. Baron Nikolai Kroner, Shore Hotel, Los Angeles. As per your instructions, the fire machinery on train 74 
will be shunted onto siding at Perita Junction about 2 p.m. I checked with the railroad and there is no farm machinery on train number 74. Where is Perita Junction? In the mountains near Lone Peak, only a small switchback. Gwen, call in Hunt, Rance, and Reynolds right away. Yes, sir. By 2 p.m. we'll all be at Perita Junction. Right on time. Wait here. How long have you been tied up? About ten minutes. I'm sitting here taking a message when some men jumped me. Telegraph the sheriff's office and have them. I up. can't. I can receive messages, okay, but they've wrecked my sending key and opened the circuit. I see. Get word through as quick as you can. Come on, Philippe. Let's go, man. The siding's over there. Take it easy. Hurry it up, boys. We'll drive her down to the ravine. We'll need time to take that radio control out of it. Look. I get it now. They're after the new Army experimental tank. Dark! There you are! It's Tracy! G-Men! Let him have it! Steve, take Hunt and Rance and circle around behind them. Right. It's our only chance for a getaway. coming up the grade right now. It's a passenger train. They'll hit head on. Isn't there a switch off halfway down? Yes, but I can't get word through. Lockwood, he's on that train. Steve? Keep trying to get through. McGurk, you stay here. The rest of you go down the road and see if you can find the Starks. I'll cut across country in the tank. Right.
Let him ride the car down the mountain. Supposing he comes to and jumps off. I'll fix that. Take those handcuffs and handcuff him to that. He may be killed. He's only one. There are hundreds of people on that passenger train.
Are you boys hurt? No, we're all right. Can you get word through to Perlita? Sure. Tell the FBI men to pick up Tracy and Lockwood here. Right. No use looking further for the Starks. Let's go. Dr. Worthy, we have made all arrangements to destroy your new 200-inch lens unless you pay me $50,000. Further instructions will follow. Dr. Worthy, he's the famous astronomer at Wilmar, isn't he? Yes, and he just finished work on that new 200-inch lens. Have this tested for fingerprints. Yes, sir. Steve, get me all the dope you can on Worthing, will you? Right. Not move the lens. It would take a week even to load it onto a flat car. Well, I'm sure we'll be able to protect it here, Dr. Worthing. I hope so. It represents an investment of a quarter of a million dollars and seven years of hard work. Seven years? Yes. I hope Mr. Clark will be able to convince them that we can't pay this extortion money. Convince them? You mean you're in direct contact with them? A second note last night told us to have the money at a point on the up and highway exactly six miles east of Holloway at 10 this morning. You know, Mr. Clark is as deeply interested in the telescope as I am. And you sent him to meet them without the money? Only a dummy package. He's going to plead with them in the interest of science. This is serious. I hope we can get there in time to stop him. you try an old trick like this, so I had you brought here. 
You're going to write a note to Dr. Worthing explaining how important it is for him to come through. My reason for coming was to explain... Forget the explanation. We want cash. That's just the point. All of our available funds have gone into building this new telescope. We can't pay you 50000 or any part of it. He can pay it if he has to. Look that over. Why, this is a plan... Yes. To... That's how we intend to destroy the lens unless he pays. Simple. Bound to work. Yes, I'm afraid it will. Hmm. Perhaps you will write that note for us now. I guess that's the only way. I'll tell you what to write. Don't worry about Clark, Dr. Worthing. If they planned to kill him, they would have done so when they first found him. I hope you're right, but I'm still greatly concerned. Meanwhile, I suggest that you close the place to all visitors. The crowd's already gathered for the afternoon lecture, and I hate to disappoint them now. Wouldn't it be all right if I just run through this one lecture and then close up? If you do, it's on your own responsibility. Doctor, doctor, I found this note pinned to the lens house door. Clark seems convinced they mean business. They must. Clark couldn't be intimidated. It's quarter of three. I suggest that you finish your lecture and get everyone out of here as soon as possible. Yes, I'll hurry it through and we can have everyone waiting here by 3.15. Meanwhile, I'll make sure no one gets near that lens. and I just found out what caused it. I finally discovered this building had sagged and thrown my instruments out of line. These foundations certainly seem solid enough. Oh, they've been standing solidly for years. I can't understand. on that. We don't get the money either way. And let them think we're bluffing? I guess you're right. I was just thinking of all those visitors up there. That's their tough luck. It's now or never. Come on. It's no use, Mr. Tracy. He's dead. From what he said, they must have a tunnel under the lens. But where's the entrance to it? The sagging building. The tunnel must be under here. If the lens building is in that direction, and the tunnel passes under this building, the entrance must be that way. Well, there's an old mine tunnel down there. That's it. Come on. The rings about the planet Saturn are gaseous in nature.
Hurry it up. That only gives us five minutes. Somebody's coming. This is it. Stay here, Mike. Come on, Steve. Looks like we beat him to it. There's enough dynamite here to blow the top of the mountain off. Yes. And all those people are still in the lecture room. We've got to get this stuff out of here. Wait a minute. I hear a clock ticking. We must have placed a time bomb to set off this dynamite. We've got a fight.
seems to me there was an X in front of us. X means experimental. Must be an experimental plane. and a half dihedral. There's a slight angle of incidence. That's about it. Looks very efficient to me. Thanks, Mac. Okay. Here we are, Dick. How does it look to you? That's the way I saw it. Like the scale. Look familiar, Mike? Yeah. Call the National Aircraft Company, Glenn. Now we'll find out who makes this plane and trace it down. Sit down, Mr. Tracy. It looks like the model, all right, but you must be mistaken. The plane you saw simply couldn't have been the type. Why, only four of these planes were ever made. One was wrecked during test flight. The other three have never been flown. Well, we must be mistaken, Dick. Thank you very much, Mr. Carson. We're making a test flight with our number two ship in a few minutes. Of course, these are designed for the government, but as government men, you're very welcome to view it. Thanks. We'll have a look. Come with me. It's designed to climb faster and higher than any plane yet made. It certainly looks efficient. If you'll excuse me, I have some final instructions for my pilot. Certainly. I still believe it was a plane like this one that we saw. Something fishy somewhere. I'm going to stow away on this test flight. I might find something. You cover up for me. Right. our test pilot. Mr. Lockwood is from the Federal Bureau of Investigation. How do you do? Howdy. Where's Mr. Tracy? Why, uh, he had to leave. Left his thanks for your courtesy. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, Brand, all set? Yes, sir. Plenty of oxygen? Fresh tanks. Shoot okay? Yes, but I don't think I'll need it today. I hope not. Well, off you go. Good luck. I'll do my best, sir. Watch her climb. Very pretty. Circle the town a couple of times so you'll have plenty of witnesses. But fly high so they can't spot the type. And don't forget to call when you land.
Okay, Pete. I think I know who it was. It must have been Tracy again. It's Brand. Everything worked perfectly, just as planned. Yes, listen. We're pretty sure that Dick Tracy was in your plane. Dick Tracy? Pete discovered him. There was a fight. Leave it to me. I'll lie like a trooper and put Tracy right on the spot. Right. What do you make of it? There's no doubt about it. Stark is stealing government planes from Karsten. But how? Simple enough. I think that test pilot Brand switches planes. He turns the government ship over to Stark and then wrecks a decoy plane of similar appearance. Shouldn't we grab Brand? No, he's small fry. By keeping our eyes open and playing dumb, we'll get onto the trail of Stark. He's the man we're after. It all sounds very irregular, but I've assured Mr. Tracy that there must be some logical explanation. There is. You see, I had just passed 16,000 feet. Everything going beautifully when I discovered a leak in the outside oil line. Union's too light? That's it. We'll double the size in the other models. So I spot a good open field over near Sierra Bonita, and I sat down to fix the leak. But the two mechanics there, were you expecting trouble? Of course not. A private plane from Glendale made a forced landing there this morning. Those two mechanics were sent out from the factory to get the ship going. They were just starting back in their car when I dropped down. There, you see. With their help, I fixed the leak in a jiffy and was just about to take off when I discovered this, discovered Mr. Tracy hiding in a tail. Did you see or hear anything that conflicts with Brand's statement? No. I couldn't see from where I was and the roar of the motors. I'm afraid, Mr. Tracy, that your imagination ran away with you. You G-men are so in the habit of uh, suspicioning everyone. I might have been mistaken. You were when you thought you saw one of our ships at Mount Wilmot. I think he's right, Dick. Let's forget it. I'll vouch for Brand. He's a swell pilot and above any suspicion. Thanks, Mr. Costin. Now, Brand, how about that accident? Well, she was handling perfect. I was just over the beach at Edgeware and climbing nicely when I saw a trickle of gas across the floor. How come? Well, I checked the fuel line, and sure enough, the tube was cracked and bent. Next moment, there was a burst of flame, and I bailed out right then. <laughs> I'm mighty glad you escaped, but how do you count for the break? Well, I don't like to say. Come on, let's have it. All right, I will. When I was trying to eject Mr. Tracy, one of us must have kicked or fallen against the tubing and cracked it. Well, Mr. Tracy. I was assigned to this case, Mr. Karsten, and I've got to follow it through. Well, if you're still suspicious, how about coming along with me tomorrow on the test flight? We are testing number three, aren't we? Definitely. We have only three days left to cinch that government contract. Of course, two of this model have cracked up, but I'm sure you'd be safe tomorrow. I'll be with you. Okay, see you then. Grand. Yeah, what is it? I didn't think he'd have the crust, but he's going up with me tomorrow. Perfect. Here's where we get rid of Tracy permanently. I'm not going to get my neck stretched for that guy. You don't have to. Now, here's what you do. When you take off tomorrow... What's this? Order two full tanks of oxygen. Want to be sure we have plenty. That's right. Can't have anything go wrong today. Which is the oxygen and which is the anesthetic? The one with the brown band will put him to sleep. Dick, I hate to see you make this flight. Forget it. It's all in the day's work. Happy landing. Right. We're waiting for you, Mr. Tracy. All set. Those are the oxygen tubes. We'll need them in about 10 minutes.
you say is hard to believe. I suspected from the beginning that the Stark gang was stealing your planes. They would have had the third one if your test pilot hadn't tried to do away with me. Well, this is a serious matter. You see, the government had entrusted me with certain specifications. The motors on those planes contain a secret that mustn't fall into the wrong hands. We're a little late, Mr. Karsten. They've already stolen two of your planes. I understand you have only one remaining plane of this type. That's right. If we're in luck, Stark gang will try to steal the motor from that fourth plane. If we help them do it. I got you. We use that fourth motor as bait and set a trap. Exactly. But it must be a very clever trap or they'll never fall for it. The Stark gang must have spies among your men. Give out general orders at once that the fourth plane is to be entirely dismantled and the motor packed for shipment by truck. The motor will leave my factory by truck, but this is only to make it look on the level. The second truck, looking exactly like the first and with the dummy motor in it, will continue on the journey. Tracy figures he'll be able to follow you after you hijack the dummy motor and in this way be led to the hideout. Very nice of Tracy to tell you these things. Does he suspect you? No. Maybe Tracy doesn't know the money that foreign agents will pay for a few government secrets. I wish the deal was complete and in the bag. Eh, getting nervous? There's no need. We've got Tracy just where we want him. Tell me more about that automatic radio signal that is supposed to guide the G-men to wherever we take the truck. It will be concealed in the crate containing the dummy motor. This automatic radio signal will be started the moment the truck is stopped. Your job, Gwen, is to take the direction readings as we broadcast them into you. Triangulate them on this map. That way, we'll always know the truck's exact location. Well, I've got to go. This thing has to be crated and put aboard the truck. Good luck, Steve. Thanks. They'll drive straight to Bakersfield. If you stopped along the road, don't resist. Just give this cord a yank. That'll start the automatic radio signal concealed in the dummy motor crate. I see. You want the hijackers to make off with the truck so you can follow them and see where they take it. That's right. The other truck's coming, Dick. Start your motor. So far, so good, Mr. Tracy. But the real motor is in this truck. I don't want anything to happen to it. I'm going to ride with it to the government warehouse. That's a good idea. Come on, Steve. Drive straight to the hideout. We'll take this motor right to where the other two are. What about the guys driving the other truck? I picked them for the job. They know the score. Let's go. Headquarters from location 12. Radio signal coming in from north 11 points west. 11 points west. Staten from location 3. Signals coming from west 20 points south. Headquarters calling all cars. Headquarters calling all cars. Truck's position approximately three miles north of Coyote Well. Highway 99. Standing by. Calling Stanton. Calling Stanton. Proceed to location five and stand by. Stanton back. Okay. Let's go. We better head north.
There, now, there's nothing to do but wait for the payoff when the foreign emissary gets here. This is a red-letter day, Carson. And if my plans go through, Dick Tracy will never trouble us again. That truck should be entering Darman Canyon with the automatic radio signal on it about now. Here comes the truck. and help us plant this dynamite. What's the gag? You'll see. Give us a hand with these cases. We're taking them up above. in Dorman Canyon. Dorman Canyon is midway between Hammett and Taunton City. Okay, Gwen. Stand by. Calling Stanton. Calling Stanton. Proceed to Dorman Canyon. We'll meet you there. That is all. Message received. Cut across to the ridge route. Well, yeah, this will give him a real welcome. It'll take a month to dig Tracy and his men out of that canyon after we blow the walls down on them. I'm going to move the car out of the canyon so they won't see it. Take the next turn into the hills. Well, the G-men ought to be along any minute now. You two stay here, light that fuse when I give you the signal, then clear out. All right. Come on, dude. We'll watch for him. the first of them, all right. There's the truck. And no one near it. Let's find out. No, wait. I don't like the looks of things. Dick. Those tracks. They're still wet. There's something fishy about this. Think it's an ambush? It might be. Lay low and wait for Stanton and McGurk. I'm going to see where these tracks lead to. If we detour, we'll be another hour. Let's change the road we're on. OK. Tracy will be there all right. He's coming in the other way. Dick Tracy is. He'll be along. Let's investigate. There's a couple of them now. I'll signal for the explosion when they get near the truck. What about Tracy? Oh, he may be wise to us. Let's get this over with. What do you think? Thank you. 
won't shoot. You'll warn him away from the truck. Stay here. That's funny. They don't seem to have touched a thing. now. I'll signal for the explosion when they get near the truck. What about Tracy? Oh, he may be wise to us. Let's get this over with. Gonna blow it? What do you think? away from the truck. Stay here. That's funny. They don't seem to have touched a thing. got a chance. The wires are gone. Look, there's a G-Man's car. Let's get it. The Star Gang have a car printed up ahead for a getaway. But I fixed it so they can't use it. Be ready for a gun battle. Our car. Steve, broadcast the message to the highway patrol. Give a description of that car and tell them to cover all roads. Right. Stan McGurk, you come with me. We'll check for clues in their car. Maybe we 
should have stuck around and made sure we got Tracy. I don't think he ever got out of there. Looks like a clean getaway. Dick, come here. Say, when's Sarp up gonna pick up those government motors we've got at the hideout? Tomorrow. They don't know the radio is broadcasting everything they say. Beats me how he figures he can smuggle them out of the country. That's Zarkov's worry, not ours. Zarkov. Say, I don't think we ought to drive all the way to the plant in this car. No, we'll ditch it the first chance we get. Zarkov. Have you the motors? Yes, three of them. Fine. The secret of those motors are worth a fortune to a certain country I know of. Yeah, well, how are you going to get them out of the country? That's where my business comes in. My scrap iron business. Washington's report on Zarkov. It just came in. Boris Zarkov. International foreign agent and mercenary spy. Suspected as a dangerous alien. Scrap iron, huh? I'm beginning to see the light. Three valuable government airplane motors are stolen by the Stark gang and held in an unknown hideout to be turned over to this foreign agent, Zarkov. Zarkov, meanwhile, is pretending to be engaged in the legitimate business of buying and shipping scrap iron to the Orient. How does Zarkov figure to get the motors out of the country? That's where the scrap iron comes in. If I'm not mistaken, in a few days, a ship will sail to the Orient carrying a cargo of scrap iron. Somewhere in that cargo will be the three government airplane motors. That's like finding a needle in a haystack. That's just it. It would be practically impossible to find those motors once they were aboard ship. We've got to get to that hideout before the motors are moved. When the Stark boys were getting away in that radio car, they mentioned going to a plant. Mix me a solvent catalytic agent for nitrate, will you, Steve? Certainly. When? Call the maritime board and find out what docks are loading scrap iron shipments for the Orient. Yes, sir. I thought phosphate. That car we captured from the Stark gang has been kept at times where there was a lot of phosphate. They tracked it in on their shoes when they got into the car. Phosphate? That's what the farmers use for fertilizer, don't they? That's right. There's a tram steamer Pier 40 sailing for the Orient day after tomorrow with a load of scrap iron. Good. Now find out the name of the trucking company. I've already done that, Mr. Tracy. You have? Mm -hmm. I tell you, Steve, the day of women's special agents is just around the corner. What is the name of the trucking company, Little Miss Intelligent? Trendon. 358 Pier Avenue. Swell. Yes, we've been hauling for a man named Zardoff. Uh, scrap iron. Where do you make those pickups? Oh, different places. We were two days clearing off a junk car lot. Today, we are bringing back several loads of scrap iron from a railroad yard. Uh, obsolete iron wheels, cables, old boilers. I see. But tomorrow, the uh, job is finished. Just two truckloads of old machinery from a broken down fertilizing plant. Fertilizer plant. That's what I'm looking for. Now, Mr. Trendle, I want to ask your cooperation in this matter. Sure, anything. Tomorrow, when your trucks leave for that pickup, I want to be on... A couple of trucks are coming here. Let them in. Everything's all set. I think Zarkov ought to give us our cut now. That's what I'm going after. Come on. How about the payoff? When the motors are on the trucks. We'll take the money now, Zarkov. Yes, as you say, gentlemen.
Where do we make the pickup? Right around the corner. The boys are waiting for you. Match, buddy. You two stay with them. Casey, come along with me. The truck's just pulled in. They're paying off inside. You better get your cut. Okay. Truck. Keep down. Something's gone wrong. Come on, boys. Take cover. seeing you here, Karsten. Now I'm beginning to understand a few things. Step over there. We can't get at him. I'll go up on the roof where I can pick him off one at a time.
chimney. It got triggered. Where'd they go? I don't know. I lost track of them when the chimney crashed. We can get away through the tunnel to the railroad siding. Come on. We'll search the place. One more score, we've got to even up with the G-man. Well, Trigger got one of them first, anyway. Yeah, but not the right one. We've got to get Tracy. And I'm for bumping him off now. We'll get our chance one of these days. But right now, we need cash. How's your job with Trendle? Okay, I'm the regular driver on truck number six. What about your helper? Oh, he's okay. He'll play along. Then we're all set. I'll fix up a note to Trendle. You want me to deliver that note? Yes. And when you do, tell Burton to stick around. In case Trendle calls in the G-man, we want to know what their plans are. Okay. is in trouble. Extortion. How was this note delivered? He found a pen with a knife to his office door. Any fingerprints? Not on the note. Steve is looking over the knife. Find anything? Take a look. There's a fragment of wood sticking to the haft. Hmm. Soft pine and paraffin. Must be from a match. It's been chewed on. The owner of that knife is a doodler. <laughs> see what else you can dig up, Steve. I'll go see Mr. Trendle. Come on, Mike. Have you any idea how they intend to carry out these threats? No, I haven't. I have 60 to 100 trucks on the road all the time. They could easily be hijacked or wrecked. The biggest contract I have is with the government to carry supplies to repairmen, reconstructing the Riviera Dam, which is badly leaking. The man I chased across the lumber yard died before I could question him or find out who he was. But these things found in his possession might help. Oh, a map. Why, it's a map of the Riviera Dam. The Trendle trucking route runs across the valley below the dam. And this road leads to the spillway. Anything happening to the Riviera Dam would wash out all the roads. Trendle would be forced to shut down and forfeit his government contract. But the guy we was chasing, maybe he was the only one behind the extortion. I don't think so. He was only a stooge sent to spy on Trendle. Unless I miss my guess, we're still dealing with the Starks. 
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is station KDTR, broadcasting our regular 15 minutes of personal messages. This is a special feature of our station. Our first message is from Mr. L.C. Trendle. The answer is no. The Stark gang may or may not go ahead with their plans. Anyway, I've arranged with Mr. Trendle to ride one of the trucks tomorrow to see what happens. Gee, maybe there'll be some fight. Can I go along, Dick? No. It's no place for a youngster. Mike, run Junior over to school, will you? Well, that's that. We'll go ahead. You boys know what to do. Now, we can do it, all right. We can put them out of business. What good's that gonna do us? They ain't gonna do us any good this time. But we got to let people know we don't bluff. When we make a threat, we mean business. Lose your nerve. You take the last truck out. Wilson has been driving for me ten years. He can be trusted. All right, Mr. Trendle. I'll contact you as soon as we reach camp. Thank you. It's only a plugged gas line. Oh, you sure you can fix it all right? Oh, yeah. We'll be along in a few minutes now. And why on number six? Is he always chewing on matches? Yeah, when he ain't whittling them. Why? Dynamite? 
Yeah, all you've got to do now is leave the truck on top of the dam and light the fuse. That'll fix Trundle's road for him, all right. Everything set. Let's go. Put up your hands. Now turn around. Get over there with him.
you okay? I think so. Where will that flood hit? It'll go down the valley, past Vincenti. Is there a telephone near here? Yes, there's one in the gatehouse. We'll have them give a warning broadcast. Come on. Have the message broadcast over all stations immediately. Okay. Thank you. Come on, Junior. Attention, residents, Riviera Valley. The dam has been blown up. A flood is coming down the valley. Everyone must evacuate that district at once. Hurry. Attention, residents, Riviera Valley. The dam has been blown up. Everyone must evacuate that district at once. Hurry. A flood is coming down the valley. Probably give Tracy a medal for that. Isn't there some way we can get rid of that guy? I think there is. Read that. A representative group of city businessmen will seek interviews today with Police Chief Hutchinson and FBI Supervisor Dick Tracy in an effort to learn whether or not these departments are lax in combating the present crime wave which has struck this city. Well, what's that got to do with bumping off Tracy? He'll be holding this interview today, won't he? Spending a lot of gab to a bunch of righteous citizens. Uh, we can blow the FBI, its records, and Dick Tracy into small bits. Yes, but how? For once, Tracy won't be on his guard. He'll never suspect his visitors. I get it. We'll hire a killer to get in with that group. Killers are mugs. We got to find somebody Tracy don't know. Somebody that looks like a respectable businessman. I know just the guy. Get the Duke on the phone. Hello? Yes, this is he. Oh, hello, Stark. That's a cinch. A thousand dollars. No, that's my price. Okay, then, just leave everything to me. Mr. Tracy, Mr. Gant, Mr. Rice, Mr. Leonard. This is Mr. Reeves. Mr. Reeves just joined our party this morning and we made him welcome. He is secretary of the Phoenix Chamber of Commerce, here to study civic problems. How do you How do? You do? Uh, gentlemen, and this is my assistant, Steve Lockwood. Won't you sit down, gentlemen? Steve, take their hats. May I take your briefcase? Why, no, if you don't mind. I'll be taking notes from time to time and I have uh, my papers in here. I see. Miss Andrews. Will you take care of this at once, please? I think you understand, Mr. Tracy, why we have come here. It's not exactly in the spirit of criticism, but the citizens that we represent are very much in the dark as to just what steps are being taken against crime. I understand. But the activities of the Federal Bureau of Investigation are of necessity unpublicized. We try to avoid as much as possible any newspaper comment. Steve, bring in that tray from the lab, will you please? Yes, sir. I'm going to explain to you, gentlemen, a few of the incidents in crime which have arisen in the past few months. I'm sure you'll agree when I'm through that the FBI has not been idle. Thank you. Now, this innocent-looking pair of pliers, left at the scene of crime, helped us to recover a half a million dollars in cash stolen from an armored car, and also permitted us to smash one of the cleverest automobile-stealing organizations this city has ever known. We had nothing but a nickname to go on, a nickname and part of a fingerprint. There isn't much to that fingerprint. It'll do. We can identify people from much less of a fingerprint than that. And I'm hoping this print will lead us directly to the Stark game. We'll shoot this to Washington in a few hours. We'll know all about Snub. <laughs> That's a funny name. That's his moniker. Moniker? What's that mean, Mr. Lockwood? 
Well, that's his nickname. If he's a criminal, he'll probably have that on file, too. The G-men know all the Crooks monikers? <laughs> well, most of them. Gee. I teletyped to Washington, making inquiries regarding any character of the underworld using the moniker Snub. Almost immediately, a reply came back. Worked him to last week, then he quit. Why? Why, because he... Say, listen, mister. I didn't ask him why. He just checked out, that's all I know. Let's go, Steve. Thanks. I knew that Snub was in that building somewhere. Dressing as one of the garage attendants, I went back alone. I had reached the sixth floor when... Get this one changed over. Start them all for the dock. Okay. Come on, let's get the money ready. million dollars. It certainly was a swell haul. Why, that armored car job was just the beginning. Don't move. Put out your hand. Clear out for hours. Trigger, do. Do pull that car over the head of the ramp. Don't let that gas get you. Put him behind the wheel. Wheel over and get out. He'll crack up and his death will be accidental. Shove it down the ramp. on the sixth floor. Come on. By the time we reached the sixth floor, the Stark gang had fled. But because of the gas-filled paint room, they were unable to take the half million in stolen currency with them.
That wall's a fake. Their machine shop's on the other side. We'll break it down. But they'll be gone before we can break through. They're bound to leave clues. We'll fingerprint the place and take their files and correspondence. You men bring the money. Come on, Steve. They certainly didn't leave much. Clever guy, that Stark. All prepared to move out. As we were taught in school, a criminal will always leaves something. Here's a slim chance. Maybe something's written on this. We'll test it. Just the name Baron Kroner. That was our next clue. Pardon me, Mr. Tracy. An important teletype message from Washington. Excuse me a moment, gentlemen. Certainly. Come along, Steve. Very interesting. belonging to the Phoenix Chamber of Commerce. Call it a hunch if you like, but I suspected him of being a phony from the moment I saw him. What's his game? You remember he didn't want to part with that briefcase? Gentlemen, I am terribly sorry. I overlooked an important appointment with the mayor. Will you present my apologies to Mr. Tracy, please? Why, certainly, Mr. Reeves. Sorry you'll have to go. Thank you. You can catch him, Sonny. Yes, sir. And if there's a bomb in the briefcase, it won't go off while the so-called Mr. Reeves is here. We'll make an excuse to get it away from him and examine it. Where's Mr. Reeves? He had an important engagement and asked me to explain. He took his briefcase with him? As a matter of fact, he forgot it. The youngster took it and is trying to overtake him. Junior! briefcase with him? As a matter of fact, he forgot it. The youngster took it and is trying to overtake him. Junior! Junior, you saved us all. Yeah, but I didn't know I was doing it. And now for the full report. FBI. Oh, yes, Commander. One moment, please. Commander Grant. Hello, Commander. Yes, we'll be right over. Come on, Steve. We've got a date with the Navy. If anything comes in, we can be reached at the Terry Union Laboratory. An electric welder. Yes. Well, it was a super welder. Professor Terhune has been working on it for uh, 
over two years now. He developed it for the Navy Department. We tested it last week, and it's perfect. Melts the toughest battleship steel like so much ice. It's going to be of tremendous value in putting armor plate on battleships. I read about it in the newspapers. Apparently, others read about it, too. When was it stolen? Last night, about 9 o'clock. I had gone out with my assistant for a bite of supper, intending to work late. When we returned, we found Mac, the night watchman, bound and gagged. Did he get a look at the men? Says the one who tied him had an anchor tattooed in the back of his hand. And this block and tackle? It was rigged just outside the window, overlooking the alley. You see, we're on the third floor here, and uh, we must have come back just as they got it loaded. How do you figure that? The ropes were still swinging when I ran to the window. They must have slid down them when they heard us at the door. Was anything else taken? Nothing was even disturbed. Well, they knew what they were after, all right. What do you make of it, Commander Grant? I don't like to think it. But there's the possibility that some spy of a foreign power has stolen it for shipment to his country. Where are the plans? Right here in the safe. Then it wasn't foreign spies. They would have taken them. Easier to transport. I guess you're right. But who else would steal it? Someone who wanted to cut a hole in armor plate and do it quickly. Well, there's no time to lose. This is our only clue. A brand new set of blocks and tackle. Steve, phone Gwen. Have her make a list of every hardware wholesaler in town. That's our make, all right, and the late model, too. I want you to get a list of every sale you've made of that model. Well, this is a cross-section of the building structure. Here we are now, and directly beneath us is that block jewelry shop. Here stands the vault, and as you know, it runs from floor to ceiling. A little hard wood and concrete to cut through, and we're right on top of the vault that holds a half a million dollar shipment of blue white diamonds. It looks like a natural. Now, Snub, how long will it take? Well, that vault's made of battleship steel. With an ordinary arc welder, six hours. And the new one? Well, my guess is 40 minutes, unless we blow some fuses. You know, that thing will pull an awful load. Enough to show on the powerhouse meters? Yeah, sure, especially on Sunday morning. All right. I'll send Sweeney and two or three of the boys out there and have them take charge of the plant. Now, Snub, at 7 o'clock tonight, you start on the floor. Saturday night, nobody in the building. At 9 tomorrow morning, the boys and I will bring the welder here. At 10 sharp, you start on the vault. And inside of an hour, we ought to be out of here with the diamonds and whatever else they have in the vault, and no traces left behind. Where's the next stop? B&J Transfer Company, out east 22nd Street to Dalton. What do you want? Hiya. The chief sent me over to see about that roll of the extension cable and those special plugs for the welder. Says you left them out. Hey, listen, everything we got at the lab went on that truck with Pa and the boys. Sure about that? Sure, I'm sure. If there's anything missing, they bounced it off the truck on the way. We ain't responsible. Now tell us more about Pa and the boys. What's that? Tracy, FBI. Hey, Jack, see me! Step up here. You ain't got nothing on us. We got bracelets on you. Notice the anchor, Steve. The watchman can identify him all right. Ten to twenty years, boys. Now look, you lose time for stealing that welder. Tell us what you know, we'll make it easy on you. You're part of the Stark gang. No, we hardly know the guy. But you robbed the Terrian laboratory. Stark hired us to get that welder for him. Hold it here call for it. Where is it now? Don't know. Stark and his two boys drove up and hauled it away in a truck. When? About a half hour ago. You know where they took it? Honest, we don't know. They're going to use the welder on a vault, aren't they? We've told you all we know. 
If they just took it, they're planning to use it today. At least 200 steel vaults. They'd get away before we checked on half of them. That voltmeter. I've got it. Where's your telephone? Right over there. Hempstead, 5880. Dick Tracy, tell me, would your welders be likely to pull much of a load in operation? Yes, very heavy amplitude. And would that load be likely to show on the powerhouse meters? Almost certain. Thanks. We may have it back for you tonight. Come on, Steve. Where to? The power plant. We'll drop these boys at the Crescent Heights police station on the way out. Come on. I do for you, gentlemen. Just keep quiet. What's the idea? I'll take a charge of this plant for a while. All right, get going. Pick him up the locker room. Time up good and safe. I'll phone that everything's all clear. charts for the past week. All right, help yourself. There are the files. Gee, man. Tell the boys to stand by in case of trouble. I don't want any shooting. I'm not going to face any murder. to the main switchboard. What are you fellas after? Just investigating. Which way? I'll show you. Seems normal. Well, we're all ready. Let's go. the exact block where this load was thrown in. And we'll have to cut off the current for the whole district until we locate the welder. Pull the main switch for the third district. I can't do that. It's an order. Steve, pull the switch. Must have blown a fuse at the plant. Now telephone the boys. It's somewhere in the third district. Okay.
There she is.
power's off again. There she is. Found it. Thanks. I'll see you later. Tracy calling headquarters. Tracy calling headquarters. Go ahead, Dick. The Starks are operating in the block founded by Main, 4th, Severance, and 5th Street. Have all agents around this block immediately. That is all. Calling all special agents. Calling all special agents. Surround block 19. Surround block 19. Calling Tracy. Calling Tracy. Tracy answering. All available agents are converging on block 19. Message received. The entire block is surrounded, Mr. Tracy, and the alley is bottled up from both ends. Fine. The Starks are here, we'll get them. What stores in this area might be worth robbing? Well, the most logical one would be Blocks, the manufacturing jeweler, but we've checked all the stores and they're empty. They wouldn't be in the stores. It's too open. At either end of the vault from above or below, where they could work without being seen. We'll take a look in the building. I'll take the upstairs. Steve, you take the basement. Fire escape. Keep a guard over him, and let me know the minute he regains consciousness. I'll come over and question him. He's 
going to live. We can't let him stay there. The rat will squeal. There's not much we can do about it. They've got cops, reporters, and photographers all over the place. Photographers? Sure, why? Get Jake and Blackie and dress them in intern outfits. Don't drop. Not much time left. I wish you'd hurry. Hello. You're waiting for someone? Yeah, we're waiting for Tracy to finish questioning that mug in there. We've got to get some pictures. Oh, I see. Now listen, you must know how to contact the Starks. Tell me where they live. Maybe you can tell us about that guy in there. Is he going to pull through? I don't know. We just came on duty. You'd better wait a while, Mr. Tracy. Gee, Mr. Tracy, if we don't make the addition with these pictures, we'll be canned. Give us a break, will you? OK, but make it snappy. Thanks, Mr. Tracy. We'll just take a couple and run. Come on, Snaggy, snap it up. All set? Take it. This window, let's open it. Report this. Come on, Steve.
Get back there and pick them off. Report this. Come on, Steve. Take over the wheel. Okay. Get back there and pick them off. All of them. Dude Stark, the engine electrician, and the other one. I don't know who he was. Well, there's nothing we can do here now. I'll stand by, you call the coroner. Right. The coroner was able to identify him, all right. The driver was Dude Stark. Well, that's one less of the Stark gang. We've gradually cut them down. I'd hope to get some evidence from that injured man that would lead us to Paul Stark. He's really the brains of the game. What is it, Gwen? A reminder from Commander Mason. You promised to go with him to see the demonstration of the new torpedo speedboat. Oh, so I did. I hate to take the time off, but I suppose I owe it to the commander. Gee, can I go too? I like to see boats. Sure, we'll all go. Let's make a party of it. And take Junior too. <laughs> Fast asleep and craft afloat. And my government is willing to spend plenty to secure one of them. 
I can't understand how you're going to manage it. Listen, Kruger. My sons and I have handled bigger jobs than this. But during a demonstration, with all those witnesses, I can't see how... Wait. And see. that old ship over there? Yes, four miles out. That boat will be within firing range in less than five minutes. Gee, that's far away. We can't even see what happens. Well, that's why we brought Mr. Dayton's television eye with us. Uh, come over to the truck. He's going to give us a demonstration. Be ready for when she comes back. I didn't know they had perfected a portable television set. This is not a true television machine. You might call it a combination television and a very powerful telescope. Uh, no sending apparatus is required. We're still in the experimental stage. Our main trouble is in the manufacture of the master tube elements. It takes two skilled men one month to spin and assemble one. By changing the adjustment, we can focus on an object at any point. Or we can broaden the field and take in a larger area on a smaller scale. He's ready to fire. certainly was quick work. Yes, very good. Five minutes and 30 seconds since the time they left the dock. Suppose they missed the target. Well, there's two spare torpedoes stowed under the hatch. Only takes a few seconds to reload. She's coming back. Let's go. machine again. What's the matter? The mass that you blew out. It'll take 20 minutes to put in the spare. If you fix it, try to follow the other boat. Come on, Steve and Mike, we've got to rescue those men.
Take the wheel, Steve. I'll have a look at that other boat. Gas Company, 640 F Street. Manufacturing poison gas calls for a federal permit. I suppose the thing to do now is look over the Draper plant. Yes, and while we're looking over things, how about the Dayton's Eye Machine? That's right. Said we could use it anytime. Well, come on. There's the gas plant over there. Try focusing through the office window. That's Kruger, the international spy. Can you focus on that map? I'll try. The M Street Dock. We've seen enough. Come on, we're going over there. Now you know where the torpedo boat is hidden. Tonight, you will deliver the gas there. Very well, Mr. Kruger. about. You wouldn't by any chance be at the uh, M Street Dock, would he? How did you know? We know a lot of things about you, Draper. We're taking you to headquarters to ask you a few questions about why you furnished the Stark gang with that poison gas. Tell Stanton to take charge of this man. We'll go after Kruger. Yes, sir. And tell your father I'm having a shipment of poison gas delivered here tonight to go with the torpedo boat. Okay, I'll tell him.
Be here in a minute. Get the car and take it out of here. I guess so. Just not cold. They got away, huh? Yeah. It's good to see you again, Mr. Anderson. How are all the boys back in Washington? They're all fine. I wonder a little bit if Dick Tracy isn't slipping in regards to cleaning up the Stark gang. I guess a lot of the boys would like to get the teeth into the Stark case. It certainly would. The theft of the torpedo boat hasn't worried, Mr. Anderson. We haven't been able to get any leads as to where the Starks have taken it. All in good time, Dick. I'll wager that before evening you'll know where the torpedo boat is. In the meantime, tell me some of the facts you've run up against in tracking down this Stark gang. Well, we've been able to reconstruct most of the details of the $500,000 armored truck robbery, which cost the life of Agent Merton. I remember the day I gave Ron his first assignment. No time like the present to go to work, Ron. The Ward Trust and Bonding Company has just requested a special agent to accompany half a million dollars across town. Your first assignment. You'll find the details on this card. Right. I'll pick you up at that bank and we'll take Junior back to school. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. They come, Pa. Yeah, you better turn off this alley at the next intersection. But, sir, we're not supposed to leave our specified route. I know it. But I have a hunch this is not on the level.
one of the most daring robberies ever committed. But Ron Merton wasn't killed by gas. I was taking Junior back to his military school when I first made inquiries regarding the armored truck. Hello, Mr. Tracy. Hello, Malloy. The word bonding shipment arrived yet? No, sir. It's about eight minutes late. I was beginning to wonder about it. I'll check back over its route. If it doesn't arrive in five minutes, send out a general alarm. Yes, sir. What's the matter, Mr. Tracy? I don't know, Junior, but we're going to find out. It's almost through. Careful, you don't get a whiff of that gas when she comes open. Get over. Wrong, Junior. The presence of that abandoned truck convinced me that something had happened to the armored car. I backtracked and inquired of various people. The only car that's come out of this alley in the last 15 minutes, Mr. Tracy, was a Whiteman storage van. Which way did it go? I believe it went down that way. Thanks. It was a nice piece of wood. Yeah. Went off slick. But the, but the G-man, he... What about the G-man? You didn't figure on gas masks. Well, come on, what happened? Don't worry. You won't cause us any trouble. Kid plucked him. Get a gun on Champ and me. I suppose you made sure he was dead? Well, he dropped without making a sound. Did you make sure he was dead? How do you know you haven't left a witness behind who can identify you all? Slow down. What are you doing? I'm gonna make sure of that cheat, man. The kid will get him. Drive to the city dump. Oh, well, hello, kid. I'm not the kid. Now get going. Just went around the corner, heading in the direction of the city dump. Thanks. Okay. Slow down. That's the man I'm supposed to meet. Stay with him, Junior. That car catches us, I'll blast you.
Anybody see what happened to the men inside of that cab? He burst into flames before I got here. Maybe that man can tell you. He was the first one here. First one I ever seen. I was no more than 20 feet away when it happened. What about the people inside? Poor fellas, they never had a chance. The driver still seemed to be conscious. I tried to get to him, but suddenly the cab was a mass of blaze and flame. You live in the neighborhood? No, 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 I live over the other side of town. I just happen to be walking this way today. You know, the old business, looking for a job. Quite a walk. Yeah. Especially with the broken ankle. You'll be in your doctor to fix that fracture. The kid was quickly tried and convicted. And paid with his life for Ron Merton's death. Later, as you know, we recovered the half a million dollars. Extremely interesting account. Mr. Tracy's office. For you, Mr. Tracy. Tracy speaking. This is Dr. Strobach of the receiving hospital. We have a patient who is badly wounded. Won't give his name, but he's asking for you. Because he has something very important to tell you about torpedo boat. Better hurry. He hasn't long to live. I'll be right over. You and your vet, Mr. Anderson. We've got a lead on the torpedo boat. Come on, Steve. We've got to get to the receiving hospital. Let's go. My government offered $50,000 for the torpedo boat. The Stark gang stole it for me during the demonstration. Then the same night, my government cabled me to cancel the deal. I had no money with which to pay the Starks. They shot me and left me for dead. Where is the torpedo boat now? Red, Red Hook Channel, abandoned ship by the... available agents to Red Hook Channel. Better look for an abandoned ship grounded there. Lockwood and I will go on ahead. You think we ought to leave them in this boat? Well, there isn't anything else we can do. Let's get out of here.
Yes, he was deserted. Yes. Well, have a look around. You check the forward deck. I'll go aft. Right. had made his escape. Yes? Hey, Miss Watson, to see you, Mr. Tracy. Send her in. Mr. Tracy? Yes? What can I do for you, Miss... Uh... Watson, Mary Watson. I'm cashier at the Park Cafeteria. I need some help. Well, won't you sit down? Uh... Uh, sit here, please. Oh, thank you. about my brother. You see, he and I are all that's left of our family. Eddie is a good boy at heart, but lately he's got mixed up with a bad bunch, and I'm worried about him. Well, I can sympathize with you, but I don't quite see how I... I've heard so much about you, Mr. Tracy. I felt if you would just have a talk with Eddie, I'm sure he would listen to you. Tell me, has he mentioned the names of any of the men he's been associating with? He's spoken of Gilmore and Stark, and one or two others. I forget just who they were. I'll be glad to help you. When can we have a talk with your brother, Eddie? If you could get away now, we'd probably find him at Kelsey's pool hall. He hangs out there most of the time. Fine, I'll go with you. I have your letter ready now. You may want to sign it before you leave. Thank you very much. If you'll excuse me, Miss Watson, I'll get my hat. Your wife put on that bulletproof vest. I'll stall to give you time to get downstairs. Keep us in sight all the time. Have Gwen round up the entire staff and stand by. We may get action today. Sounds like a small little frame up to me. Yep. Starks are really on the warpath. Good luck, Dick. All right, Miss Watson, we can go now. Hello, Junior. Hello. Nice work, Glenn. Dick says get the whole department together. Blake's at home. Catch Nat at the laboratory. Looks as if we might have some excitement. You drive. Well, stand by the lever. Joe, don't shoot if you can help it. Okay, boss. Yeah, shooting's too good for him. I want Dick Tracy in here alive. Is Eddie here? He's probably at Manny's place. Take your place. Gloomy old neighborhood. Sure is. Don't know why. 
why Eddie hangs around here. Where is this Manny's place? Just past the corner. He slammed the door right in my face. So he slammed the door in your face, eh? Well, get it open. Get out of there. It's all right. Only a flesh wound. What happened to the Starks? Where'd they go? Took a powder up that cold chute. Take a look. Made a clean getaway. Must have taken my car. It's gone. All right. Get going. It's just a case of dressing, but I advise you not to use the arm much for a few days. Yes? Yes, I'll tell him. Dick, they just found Steve's car near Marino Avenue, with Junior's cap in it. Junior? Why, he was here when I left. I'll call his school. Now remember, you say just what I told you. They haven't seen him since this morning. Hello? 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 This is Junior. Hello, Tracy speaking. Hello? Junior, where are you? Junior? I'm with Mr. Stark. Junior! Now listen, Tracy, I've got the kid. But I'm willing to train him for you. Now here's what you do. You leave your car at Dobbs' corner and start walking up the old Mill Pond Road unarmed and alone. At exactly 1.30. It's your only chance. And try to trace this call, wise guy. What happened? What's the matter? Junior's with Stark. And he wants my life as ransom. How's this? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. It works well now, Dick. We can get every word you speak. Stark certainly picked a swell spot for this exchange. No one can get near Mill Pond Road without being seen from the hill. I'll give you the directions as best I can. Well, so long, Dick. The best of luck. Thanks. I'll need it. Tracy. Nice meeting you under these conditions. You certainly kept me walking long enough, Stark. I must have covered two miles in this hot sun. Get that? You walked about two miles before they picked him up. That's the first move. Get in. Where's Junior? Perfectly safe. We can turn him loose later. 
Get going. Pretty country, these hillsides. You picked a nice spot for a hideout. They turned into the hills. Yeah, this is working swell. Yeah. I never been up this way before. Your first and last trip, huh? Fourteen outpost road, huh? Is that where you have Junior? Yes, you can see him inside. Get that? Fourteen outpost road. We've taken good care of the kid, Tracy. We'll let you have a visit with him before we turn him loose. That's about all the information I want your men to get. Hey, we've lost him. Well, that's all we need. I'll relay it to the boys. All set. Drive on. Everything's going to be okay. You did the right thing. What's the matter? You're hurt. Just a scratch. Now, look, youngster, I want you to go now. We can finish our business after Junior's gone. Can't we start? What do you mean? I mean the kid will be twice as useful to me when you're out of the way. Get in that room. Oh. Cut it, champ. You lay a finger on that kid, and all the bullets in the world won't keep you from tearing you apart. Go with him, Junior. I'll talk to you later. Hey, you had the champ buffalo, Tracy. It's too bad you're on the other side of the fence. I could use a guy like you. Get in that room. We'll finish our talking there. Say, that G-Man's a pretty tough monkey. Tough? Wait till you see his face when his pals get blown to bits. We've got TNT planted under the other cabin. They'll think we're in there. In fact, they're on their way now. And two minutes after they open that gate and trip the switch, Perhaps you'd like to sit down. I've got a lot to say to you. bring my four sons back to me, I'll at least have the satisfaction of sending you after them. Now get over to that window. And there go your brave G-men to your rescue. When they find that place empty, they'll head up here. Okay. That's why you're wrong, Tracy. I've told you nearly everything I wanted you to know. There's nothing left now but the wind-up. That finishes your G-men. Now, Mr. Tracy, step back from that window. One more little matter to attend to, and you, Mr. Dick Tracy, will never bother me anymore.
Take it easy, Junior. Everything's gonna be okay. You did the right thing. What's the matter? You're hurt. Just a scratch. Now look, youngster. I want you to go now. We can finish our business after Junior's gone. Can't we start? What do you mean? I mean the kid will be twice as useful to me when you're out of the way. Get in that room. Cut it, champ. You lay a finger on that kid and all the bullets in the world won't keep you from tearing you apart. Go with him, Junior. I'll talk to you later. Okay. You had the champ buffalo, Tracy. It's too bad you're on the other side of the fence. I could use a guy like you. Get in that room. We'll finish our talking there. Say, that G-man is a pretty tough monkey. Tough? Wait till you see his face when his pals get blown to bits. We've got TNT planted under the other cabin. They'll think we're in there. In fact, they're on their way now. And two minutes after they open that gate and trip the switch, it won't bring my four sons back to me, I'll at least have the satisfaction of sending you after them. Now get over to that window. And there go your brave G-men to your rescue. When they find that place empty, they'll head up here. Okay. That's why you're wrong, Tracy. I've told you nearly everything I wanted you to know. There's nothing left now but the wind-up. Tracy, step back from that window. No! It's more valuable to us alive. The kid's warned the G-men. Get him up and get him in the car. Hurry up. They'll be here any minute. duty to wage relentless war against crime, even though it might cost the life of the valued agent. I know it would be Tracy's wish to do everything in our power to apprehend the Starks, regardless of how the outcome might affect him personally. Lockwood, have a description of the Starks' car broadcast immediately. Well, that's just it, sir. None of us saw the car. I did. It was a black Harmon touring car. I memorized the license. It was 2R-31-94. Good boy, Junior. Notify all the law enforcement agencies to be on the lookout for that car. And have the car's description broadcast over all radio stations. Hurry. Right. Attention all listeners. Members of the deadly Stark gang are now driving through the community in a black farm and touring car. License number 2R3194. If you see the car, notify FBI headquarters immediately. 2R3194. Operator! Operator! 
Open it here. Give me the key, man. FBI? Yes, this is the G-man's office. Them bandits you were looking for just passed my place here. This may be a lead. This party says that Stark's car just passed his place. Get the address. Where are you? Jake's filling station, Garby Road. Jake's filling station on Garby Road. Right. Order all agents. Concentrate at Jake's filling station at once. Yes, sir. Everything all right? Yep. Nobody's been around. All right. Take him upstairs. Get up on the top of the car and keep a lookout. You get the plane ready. Champ, you and Clem come with me. I seen them. They went down that way. What does the road lead to? Straight to Barneyville. Any turnoffs? Well, one little dirt road leads over to the old rock quarry. Well, the police will be looking for them at Barneyville. We'll take a look at the quarry. Cars are headed this way. Get the right. Jack, never mind that. G man. without being hit. Come on. What are they doing with those trucks? They are up to something. I can stop. I'll lay these on from above.
out your hands. Look, you lay a hand on me and I'll blow you to bits. Give yourself up, Stark. You set that nitrogen off, you'll die too. I'd as soon die this way as in the chair. Tell them to drop the guns and step back. Do as he says, men. Not you, Tracy. You're gonna fly me out of the country. That way. Go on, get in. No, wait. Take off. Teletype just as you left. Read it out loud. Heartiest congratulations to you and your staff on the successful termination of the Stark case. Stop. From this date, you will serve in capacity of inspector in charge of the entire West Coast. Oh, that's marvelous. Let me be the first to congratulate you, Inspector. Thank you, Junior. You deserve it, Dick. Thank you, Steve. Hey, Mom! Ha, ha, ha. 